Hi, I'm Mirabeth Quinn, a mixed media artist from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to show you how I take all of the papers that I work with. Some of them I make myself, some I collect from other places, and I learn a lot about how they behave, how they will look when I actually adhere them to the paper, how they will look interacting with one another, and just what their tendencies are. So that when I'm not practicing and I'm actually painting something I care about, then I have a place that I can go and really make sure, is this the paper that I wanna use or how does it interact with something darker underneath it? And I just collect information. I do this in my sketchbook. And so I'll show you how I categorize everything and just document my little experiments. So let's get started. Here I am with my accordion sketchbook. If you've watched my videos at all, you've seen me use this. Um, it will fold out like an accordion as far as you want it to go <laughs> until the pages run out. And then all you have to do is turn it over and you've got pages that start again on the other side. So what I'm gonna do, because this sketchbook is something that I just refer to for lots of different things. So it's just in the nature of this sketchbook to be that for me. So I thought, well, this is the perfect place that um, I can start making notes for myself about the effects that different collage papers have because they're all very different. You can't just look at this piece and know exactly what it's going to look like on the painting surface. If you put it over a white background like this, it's going to look one way. If you glue it down over a piece that's already there, it's going to look another. Let's say there's something that's darker on the surface. If you put this over it, it's going to have very different characteristics. This kind right here, I think I just got out of a, a shoe box. You know when you get new shoes and they have all that <laughs> wadded up material down in the toe of the shoe? That's what this is. The reason that I really want to make a record of these things is that I want to know if I'm actually working on a real painting that I have, maybe it's a commission or something that I hope to sell. I, I kind of want to know what this does before I stick it on there. So to give you an idea about the kind of things to get some data on, um, there are the different kinds of papers. Uh, these are just some regular tissue paper. This is a paper, it's kind of shiny. I mean, isn't that pretty, the way those two interact, at least right here. And they look a little bit differently when you get the, the golden or whatever adhesive you use. I use golden It's because it is a glazing medium. It will take your acrylic paint and depending on how much you use, it will give it some level of transparency. But it's also a medium that will attach these to the surface really, really well. And so I like it because I can move easily between those two purposes, just having one medium. I like this because it's light and it's easy to work with. We can also try out things with texture, like this is a piece of gauze. This looks really beautiful and interesting on the surface of a painting. And then you can easily put paper over it. There are the tissues that I have made with the jelly plate. Now I will say, the jelly plate has a very distinctive look to it. If you're looking for something that you want to really stand out, the jelly plate is good for that. It, as long as I'm not re not really wanting what's underneath it to show through, these are great. Especially for dark areas, they're great. This is a paper from, you know, just some decoupage paper from the art store. I'll see how that interacts with other tissue papers when you add them together. I love that. So, the last thing that I'll be putting in this book is my mulberry paper. It really gives, there's a lot of pigment there, so it can give a lot of pop. So, we've got a lot to look at.
very quickly, here's the way I laid it out. This column over here is just going to be where I attach whatever piece I'm looking at, just so I have a record of what it looks like all by itself. And I can also feel what sort of material it is and what I'm, what I'm actually looking at. Then I made a light column, sort of a gradient, so it can go from pure white to you know some neutral colors, so you can see what that will look like as a background. And then I put in a dark column, and I just use this color because this is a dark color that I use quite frequently in my paintings. But of course, you can use you know, whatever dark colors give you the most information about that. Then I left a column that is for doubling the paper. So you can, you can double it over itself or maybe even multiples just to see how that changes how the paper looks. And then there's a bigger column left for pairings in case you are interested in having a place where you can go back and see you know, for instance, what does it look like when I use these two together? I'm gonna get started on this and let you see how it takes shape. So while I'm working on this, I think it's worthy of pointing out that work like this on the surface can sometimes seem somewhat unimportant. I mean, it's not essential to getting another painting done or out the door or on the website. Since I began incorporating the awareness that I'm not just creating paintings, but actually developing my artistic sensibilities and honing my craft, then I can expand my perspective, my perspective that can often limit me in what I see as possible. Since I began investing in these activities, I find that my understanding of why it's important is actually growing. So by doing exercises like this, it's as if I'm sending a message to the part of my brain that wants to limit or edit my creativity. And it's a message that I value learning. I value growing and understanding my own creative impulses more than I value this idea of perfection or even being good. Changing my mind in this way, simply by giving time to things that cultivate this new perspective, and give significance to my own development has been truly like a game changer to my practice. I find that I'm more curious and less likely to feel like this is a pass or fail sort of venture. Maybe more like an adventure. And so it cultivates this curiosity and a bit of fun and just someone who's taking in the materials that they work with and studying them and getting to know them. I think this is very important. So I thought I would show you what I got done and also how my process evolved as I went along, which that's just a natural thing, right? I first started out doing this gradient like background column. And then I very quickly realized that it just didn't make a big enough difference <laughs> for my time. The valuable thing that I really learned in this column is just what the paper looks like on the background. This very first one I actually adhered in the type column. And then I realized, you know, I'm just gonna tape them because what I really need to, to be able to do is feel the thickness of the paper, also take it off if I need to and examine which paper am I actually looking at and which papers that am I considering using that actually match that. There are a number of different tissue papers. I put one of the ones that I order off of Amazon in the description, but I also pick up a lot of papers out of, uh, like I said, shoe boxes or gifts that I get. They have different qualities to them. So I really need to be able to feel what those qualities are and and see what they look like not adhered to the page so I can recognize them in my box. 
This was a page that was mostly mulberry papers. This is not mulberry and neither is this, but well, that isn't either, but everything else is the mulberry paper. I also put that in that link in the description as well. This was the last page that I got to. It was a bunch of lighter paper. This uh, was a paper that I did on the jelly plate. It's not transparent in any way. So I just got to see how that plays out. It really works well when I put transparent uh, papers over it. This is also the pairings that I did with the piece of gauze. As you can see, you can still really see the gauze. This one is the gauze on the top, and this, these two are papers over the gauze. So as you can see, I, I would do a number of different things. A doubling here in this column really gets to show you in this middle section where they crisscross how much darker you can make it. And in some cases, it didn't make a difference at all like this. So then I would take this paper, put it in this pairing column and do a number of different. These are both mulberry, but this one is highly transparent. This one has a lot more pigment and it's darker, I mean thicker. And this one is not tissue paper at all. It's paper I tinted that is out of a shoe box. So you can see, you can't really see the paper underneath this at all. So you get lots of information about what these things do together. The, the patterned paper mixed with other patterned paper, mixed with mulberry paper. Having this dark column, I think, is one of the most valuable things because you get to see that some papers, like this teal one here, this dark, one. They do really well on the dark background. And even the lavender shoebox paper, that's not tissue paper, just paper paper, it actually does well on the dark background ground as well. But when you get into the transparent tissue papers, they adhere to the dark background and it really highlights the fibrous nature of the tissue. Now, that may be something you love, and that may be something in some cases that you don't want that look on your painting. So you find out a lot right there. So this book is really helpful in a lot of ways. Chances are I can go through these pages and really find something that at least is close and gives me an idea about what will happen there. So as you can see, you can take this in any direction that you want. And as you go, it can evolve and you just learn by doing, which isn't that the whole point is to just learn by doing. I used to feel like when I was younger that I, I just should know. I just, all other artists, I bet, know how to do these things, which really, now that I've been doing art for a number of years, I realized, you know, all other artists, the thing that they're doing is exploring. They're exploring and they're asking questions and they're experimenting and getting answers. And they're also allowing those answers to evolve into other things over time as they grow their skills, as they want to, to venture into new areas. They are flexible and allow their skill set and their knowledge level to morph and expand into that new area so they can learn new things. So this is a great exercise for a number of reasons. So I hope that you enjoy this and find this helpful and please leave me your comments. I always love to hear your comments. So let me know what you found out and if you have done it a different way that I might find really helpful. Let me know about it. If you're interested in taking a class from me on mixed media collage, I'm actually making one right now. It should be done in the next few months. And I have a list where you can sign up to be one of the first notified when it's ready. So I hope you join me. I think it'll be fun. So you can find that link in the description or on the homepage of my website. 
Also at my website, you can find the PDF, Normalize the Mess of Creative Journey. It really just helps us with those thoughts that limit our creativity and our progress. So you can find me at maribethquinnart.com and thank you for watching. I always love to hear your thoughts in the comments.